Hey everyone, this is Sahiti on behalf of Edureka and welcome to this session on UiPath Excel Automation. So thank you all the attendees for joining in today's session. So let's get started with the session now. So first, let's look into all the topics that we're going to cover in today's session. We'll start today's session by understanding why do we exactly need Excel Automation and then understand how to install the Excel activities. After that, we'll look into what screen scraping is and then finally look into a hands-on where we'll be fetching details from an Excel file and then feed it into a Google form. All right, so that sounds interesting, right? So why do we need Excel automation? Well, as all of us know that Excel is perhaps the all-time champion in storing, organizing and manipulating the data, Excel is easy to use and is also highly popular. But it is not always user friendly and at times it can prove to be very time consuming and hard to integrate with other applications. So in today's environment where everything is multi application focused with data constantly being transferred between applications migrating and integrating data into platforms can therefore become troublesome, right? So to perform large number of tasks with good accuracy and speed and also to integrate with other applications to provide high productivity efficiency Excel had to be automated. So guys these were the reasons why Excel automation came into first place. Now how do we implement this Excel automation? Well that is really simple. You just have to implement it by using a tool, right? So here we'll be using the UiPath tool to automate Excel activities. So I'm assuming that all of you are well versed with the UiPath interface and workflow passing variables between actions, right? So these concepts will help you out throughout this tutorial. So now let's get started. So as I told you before that we'll be using the UiPath tool to automate activities related to Excel. But before that you have to install the Excel activities in UiPath Studio. So for that let me show you how you can do that. All right. So let me just open my UiPath tool and let me show you how that happens. So for that let me just open this blank project. So when you open your UiPath Studio, you can go to this manage packages option. All right. So when you click on this, this is where you can check if your Excel activities or any other such activities for like the word activities, the mail activities are installed or not. So in my system, you can already see that the Excel activities are installed. All right. Just in case if Excel activities are not installed on your system, you just have to search in the search bar for Excel activities and click on the install radio button. All right. So that would automatically install all the packages related to the Excel activities. Now let me just close this. Okay, so now that you know how to install the Excel activities and you know the reason why you should automate the Excel activities, let's move on to a hands on where we'll be creating an automation to fill a form with UiPath. All right, so what this automation is going to do is that we're going to have a set of details stored already in a CSV file and then we'll create a Google form. So when you run this automated task, all the details are fetched from the CSV file and Google form fills automatically. All right. So is it clear to everyone? All right. So that's great. So now let's continue with our demo. So to understand this, let's go back to our UiPath tool. All right. So let me just go back to my UiPath tool. So we already have a blank project created here. So now let's just drag and drop a sequence in the workspace. All right. So basically sequence is a place where all your activities are performed. So since we're dealing with the Google form here, let's first create a Google form. All right. So for that, let's go back to our browser. So now let's just create a Google form here. So for that, let's just type in Google for Google forms. Go to Google forms. And then let's create a blank Google form. All right. So let's just say we create an application form. So let's just type in the name as application form and the form description as details of students, right? And then let's start adding questions. So we'll let the first question be the name. All right. Let the second question be mobile number. Let's add one more question, which could be university name. And finally, the email ID. So, guys, this is a simple form. Well, you can customize your form as you want. Now, let me just send this Google form to anybody, right? So, let me just send this Google form to myself. 
So let's just type in my mail ID. All right, and click on send. Once I click on send, let me just open my mail ID. And then you can see that I've got an application form, right? So let me just open this application form. So the link over here has to be included in your sequence. So let's go back to our UiPath tool. Let's search for an activity named open browser. So let's search for open browser and then drag and drop it here. Once this is done in the URL over here, you have to specify the Google Forms link, right? So let's go back to our form, copy it. Let's come back to the UiPath tool, open double quotations and then paste it over here. All right. Now after you're done with this in the do section of your open browser, you have to include a type into to identify the questions of the application form. All right. So for that, let's just search in the activity pane for type into. And then drag and drop it here. All right. So if the first question is about full name, so let's just type in the text as full name. And to indicate the element in the browser, you have to first open that application form, right? So let me just open that application form. Go back to the UiPath tool, click on this indicate element browser, and then choose this field, right? So I've chosen this field. So basically, this is the field that it identifies your answer, right? So when the first question is about full name, your answer would be feeded here automatically. Similarly, we have to do the same for the next three inputs also, right? So let's just drag three type in twos here and then include the text, mobile number, university name, and then email ID. So let me indicate the element inside the browser for mobile number. So let's just open that and let me choose over here. Similarly, let me do it for the university name and also the email ID, right? So let me just open that. All right. So guys, this was the basic step to input of the fields, but here let's put some test information to check whether it's working or not. All right. So I'll remove this full name and include a name here. Let's say I put a name Sahiti. With mobile number. And let me again also include the email ID, right? So let me just do it. All right. So now let's just check if it's working or not. So when you open this form, you can see that after you fill in all the details, you click on the submit button, right? So we have to automate that movement also. So for that, in the activity pane, we're going to search for a click activity. So let me just drag and drop the click activity here and then indicate the element inside browser, right? So let's just click here and then do that. So now once you've automated your click button also, there could be some times that because of your network issues, the page may not be loaded immediately, right? So for that, we're going to add a delay activity. So let's search in a delay activity and then let me just drag and drop it here. In the property panel of the delay activity, let's add for how many seconds do we want the delay? So let's say if I want the delay for three seconds, I'll add in this format. All right, so this would basically add a delay of three seconds. So if you observe here, this complete sequence is only working for a single input. Now, if you want to add more and more records, then we have to press on to the go back button, right? So we'll choose a go back activity from the activities pane and then drag and drop it here. So now let's just run this program and see what's happening. What's going to happen is the Google form will start filling by itself by the input we have given. Right? So we've given this input and it's filling by itself. After that, it's clicking on the submit button and it's going back. Now, this was for one input. What if we want to do it for many more records and we wanted to fetch the data from a CSV file? So for that, let's just change the text here first. Now to read the data from a CSV file and to repeat this actions again and again, we have to create a flowchart. So for that, Let's first create a sequence again. So let's just close this and then go to a new sequence and let's just say we name it as Excel demo and then let's click on create. In this you have to add a flow chart, right? So let's search for a flow chart now and then let's drag and drop it here. Once you drag and drop a flow chart, let's add a sequence here, right? So let's just search for a sequence and then let's add it here. Now open the sequence and then copy all the activities in this particular sequence and paste it there. So let's just copy all the activities from here and then let's paste it here. So now you have copied all the actions inside this particular sequence to add them into the flow chart. So now what we want to do is we want the Google form to fetch the data from a CSV file. So let me just show you a CSV file where I've stored the data, right? So let me just open that CSV file 
or you can see that I've put in the details of full name, mobile number, email ID, and your university name, right? So let's just see now how the Google form fetches the data from this file and fills it over there, right? So let's go back to the UiPath tool and let's search for an activity known as read CSV, which would help us reading all the data in a CSV file, all right? So let's just search for read CSV activity and then let's drag and drop it here. So once you drag and drop this activity, just click over here to open this activity, all right? So in the file path option, you have to mention the file from which it is going to fetch the data, right? So let's just so let's just click on this three dots. Go to desktop, choose the data CSV file and click on open. This will automatically include a file path, all right? Now, our CSV file must have an output format of data table in order to be processed. So for that, we're going to create a variable. So let's just click on create variable. Go to table and choose the table name. Let's say I choose the table name as data table and then click on OK. Once this is done in the variable section, you can see that the variable data table is created. All right. So now in the properties section, you have to mention the data table variable in the output field. All right. So let's just mention the data table variable. Now let's go back to our main sequence and see what's happening. So we know that the start node has to be connected to the read CSV activity. So the data has to be fetched from here, right? So let's right click on the read CSV activity and choose set as start node. All right. So let's just summarize what's happening till now, right? We selected a start node from where all the data would be fetched. We mentioned the file path from which all the data should be fetched and then it would be connected and then we created a sequence in which it will open the Google Forms and start filling in the data, right? So now that we have configured our read CSV activity to the file path where from where we have to fetch data, it's observed that it only fetches data for one time, right? But now if you want to create a loop of iterations of records from our database, what we have to do is you have to drag and drop the for each row activity from the activity pane. So let's just search for for each row activity and then let's drag and drop it here. Once you drag and drop it here, double click to view it. And then in this activity, you have to mention for each row in a particular data table, you want to iterate everything that is present in the body of the loop, right? So let's just mention the output data table. That is the data table variable in our case. And then let's go back to our main workflow. That is the Excel demo. Over here, let's just right click on this activity and then cut this activity. All right, and then open sequence activity. Once you open the sequence activity in the do section of the open browser, you have to include the for each row activity, right? So let's just paste this activity here in the body section of the for each activity. So let's just drag and drop everything that's needed. So let me just drag and drop here one by one. And let's just delete this body section. Now let's just summarize what all is happening in the sequence. Well, the open browser activity is going to open the Google Forms link that we mentioned. After that, it's going to perform everything that is present in the do section of its body, right? So in the do section of its body, we have mentioned that for each row in the data table, that is from the each row in the Excel file, we're going to read data and then give it as input to the Google Forms. All right, so that's what's happening. So now let's go back to our main workflow and then let's connect the read CSV activity to the sequence so that the data can be fetched from the Excel file, right? So let's just connect this activity now. And then let's run again. What's happening here? It's filling the text again and again that we mentioned in the type into actions, right? So we don't want this to happen. We want the data to be fetched from a read CSV file. So for that, we have to mention the row names of our CSV files. So let's just mention. So for that, in the type into field, we will place the information of the row names of our CSV file, right? So let's see what are the names that we have given in our CSV file. Well, we've given full name, mobile number, email ID, and university name, right? Let's mention these in the type into fields. So for that, let's go to the first type into fields, type in row, and in bracket, type in full name, and convert it to string. Similarly, do that for mobile number. University name and then the email ID, right? Now, once it is done, let's click out of the sequence and check for errors. Well, you can see that there are no errors, right? So let's just open the complete sequence and check for exclamation marks. There are no errors. So let's go back to our main workflow and run the project. But before that, let's close our CSV file, right? So let's just close our file and then now let's run the program. So when you run this program, you can see that all the fields are filled automatically in the Google form, right? It's not just happening once it's happening until the time it's able to fetch the details from the Excel file, right?
So after the project has run successfully, it will return back to the UiPath tool. So now let's open the Google Forms and see the number of responses, right? So let me just open the Google Form. So you can observe all the responses here. So that means our project was successful. Just automated. You can implement this at a large scale industry where many hyper growth companies are using it to automate the task, save time, money, and also get the task done with high accuracy, right? So that's how automation will help you to enhance your businesses in the scaling industry. I hope you like this session. Thank you and have a great day.